Hello and welcome to another episode of the AI Show. I'm back. My name is Seth Juarez. I work at Microsoft. But I am the in the larger AI community. Love doing AI stuff. I thought we'd start with uh, where's everybody coming from today? Hmm. Put in the chat. I'm excited everyone's here. By the way, uh, it's just me today, and I'm going to be going through Prompt Flow Part D. I did it one about a month ago, and um, I feel like we didn't finish. So we're going to do that today uh, whilst everyone's telling me where they're from. Uh, so let me share my screen. Boom. Uh, wow, I, I haven't done this in a while. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, this, this is embarrassing. Oh, there it is. Nice. So today, uh, we're going to uh, revisit uh, PromFlow. It's a new Azure AI Studio uh, feature. I'm going to turn this down here so you can hear me. Um... And by that, I'm going to mean we're going to look at what we built before, what we we built, and then we're going to continue. Obviously, throughout, throughout. I'm going to do this in red because it's important. Red here. We're going to answer questions. So have them ready. Who cues here, questions here. So answer. I'm going to answer all the questions here about PromFlow uh, and building LLM-inspired applications in general. Again, some of this stuff is my opinion, and I will tell you when it's my opinion. Other than that, I'll tell you if it's Microsoft has built the thing or not. But again, some of these things are my opinions. So just FYI, for example. Some of my opinions are not very popular. Do you have any unpopular opinions when it comes to this stuff? Uh, we should. We should. I'm curious. Unpopular opinions. And then number three, uh, I said we would continue, but I'm hoping we get to eval, evaluation of prompts, evaluation. Because I think this is the part, evaluate, this is the part that uh, most people kind of elide when I look at this stuff. And that's probably the most important part. Gosh, I'm terrible at writing. I'm gonna write this really nicely because this is the most important part, right? E oh, geez, this is all terrible. By the way, I'm using a uh, my nice uh, Wacom, Wacom tablet. Um, Wacom tablet. So I'm going to put this down. I'm like running out of space here on my little tiny desk. I'm going to write this down. This is super important. E -va -u -a evaluation. English is so weird. Evaluation. Uh, and this to me is like, not to understate it, but like, you need to do this stuff. If we're going to use this stuff, um, if we're doing this stuff, if we're using LLMs to build applications, your, your co-pilots, et cetera, uh, you should really evaluate what you're doing. Otherwise you're not being very responsible. In my opinion, IMO, I think Microsoft thinks that too. But again, Microsoft is an amorphous block company with hundreds of thousands of people with all different opinions. All right. So where are people coming from? Let's take a look here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, Germany. Danke. Das ist fantastisch. Unglaublich. Quebec, Canada. Quebec. I don't understand French Canadian. To be fair, I don't understand regular French and they don't understand me. Anytime I'm in France speaking French, they're like, I'm like, bonjour, tout va bien aujourd'hui? And they're like, everything's great, American. 
Bangalore, a lovely place. Welcome, my friend. I'm glad you are here. Uh, Redmond, Washington. Uh, or maybe maybe it's a different Redmond. I don't know. I don't know. We have Singapore. The Hague. Welcome. The Hague. Costa Rica. I need to I feel like I need to say it with emphasis. Costa, Costa. Rica. Rica. Right? I mean that's I left I left this on a little bit. It sounds like I'm in my my reverb. Sounds like I'm in. It feels like more important. Hi everybody. To the thousands gathered here. Or dozens, I mean, either way. Uh, Finland as well. Um, CSU, hello, welcome from Microsoft. Microsoft has a ton of amazing people that work for them. And I'm just here trying to not to, br not to bring it all down. That's just what I'm here. Smoky Seattle. Yeah, I went outside and I was like, um, oh, shoot. Someone said Smoky Seattle and I'm pushing totally the wrong one. So, so, is that Smoky Seattle? Smoky Seattle, yes. Jay McCormick. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Argentina, bienvenidos. Uh, Bulgaria. Uh, Toronto, welcome. Um, and now some of the... Um, Habla turco, por favor. I don't speak Turkish. My mom does, though. She loves Turkey. Uh, Scotland. South Africa. Uh, the Netherlands. Welcome. Um We've met. It's good to see you again. Uh, Philadelphia. From the Greek Philios, which means brotherly love. Delphia. City. Uh, so some unpopular opinions here. Uh, here's a good one. The AI robot apocalypse is inbound. And I like eating. So I'm hoping my fridge is off the grid. <laughs> Hold on. I have a, I used to have buttons for this stuff. Where where's my clapping? Uh, oh man, I I hit the wrong one, but it works. It works. Um I lost my mouse. Okay, well everyone welcome here. Uh so let's get started here. Oh, we have someone all the way from Somalia. Welcome. Uh Keep the echo on. Oh man. I you know when quantum computing was making its way through stuff, I think it was what? When I started looking at it like three or four years ago, I was like, okay, I could either go the physics route or the computer science route and neither the twain shall meet. I don't know. They're like very different. And I went down the physics rabbit hole and boy, there is just a lot going on uh, with that. Okay. So let's remind ourselves where we left off here. Uh, this is what we built before. I don't even know if it works. Um, uh, we were building a Contoso chat store chat that had documents in it. And it looks like here, uh, I need to go over here because one of the things, and by the way, thanks to Cassie for, um, she's awesome. Uh, we are on the same team. And so we were going to be swapping duties a lot on the AI show. Uh, so let's go to this Sauron and I need to start this if anything's going to work. Because what people don't might not realize is that when PromptFlow runs, it has to run in some kind of computing uh, thing. Uh, so where does it run? Well, it turns out that there's two options in PromptFlow. Uh, two options in PromptFlow. Uh, number one, you can run it on uh, like a managed... Wow, that made a line. A managed VM. We call them compute instances. Uh, or you can run it in like a serverless... Uh, and it's not that there's no servers. You just think about servers less. Servers. I didn't make that up, by the way. That was not my joke. Um, I just wanted everyone to know that I, I have the jokes. So these are the two ways. And so what I'm doing is I'm, uh, and so this is, you put like an endpoint and it runs on here. So what I'm doing is I'm using this thing. Uh, so when we go to my prom flow here, which I wasn't showing you before, uh, I'm going to start the compute environment over again, because my compute environment to save money shuts down every evening at six, uh, so that this thing 
you know, so that's what's going on. Uh, so that's my computer environment. I'm starting it up uh, so that we can work. And then when I go to the prompt flow, the, the prompt flow, you'll see that there is a runtime and you can see that it, it's starting up. So on this CI, a uh, uh, compute instance, CI, don't, not to be confused with um, continuous integration, uh, this compute instance um, runs a series of um, prompt flow runtimes. And the way that you you make a prompt flow runtime is you have this thing called the runtime. And then when you make it, there's remember how I said there was two different versions? That's what's going on. And so this compute instance, when you make any runtime, you can you can name it something. You can pick the compute instance that you want. And then you can use default environments, um, right? That that prompt flow just has, or you can create customized environments. And those customized environments are built on top of things called environments inside of Azure Machine Learning. So everyone's like. It's like that, it's that, hold on, I gotta find it. Give woman math, uh, math in her head thinking. There's a, there it is. This is the one. Uh, so we are going to copy this image, copy image, and we are going to place it in our, uh, here, because I mean, you know, we're trying to learn stuff. So I'm saying all this compute environment black. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to draw here um, what this means. So inside of this box here, uh, how do I move this up? Here, here, let me let me do this here. So what's happening is inside of this compute instance, right? You basic we basically have a set of containers that are running the prompt flow runtime. Right, so this is one machine, and this, in our case, it's called Sauron because, you know, I'm a nerd. There's no way around that. I'm basically a huge nerd, geek. I don't know what the difference is. Help me out. Um, oh yeah, and in fact, it's just, this is funny. Um, th this is funny. Like literally, like reading my mind. Can one customize the images and packages on those computers? Reading my mind, dear. It's like you and I. Like we're reaching through the interwebs and we're having a, an understanding of one another. Yeah, and, and so uh, this this uh, compute instance is running a series of containers in it uh, for specifically if you're for prompt flow, but it can run other things. Like it can run, it can run notebooks. And so I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from the machine learning, but for machine learning, we use it to as a special computer environment. And what happens is when you create, when you create a prompt flow, so, you know, that little cool little prompt flow thing with all the, you know, the nodes and stuff, this prompt flow runs, but you have to pick the prompt flow environment that you want to use. So how do you define those environments? Well, that's what, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, as you saw here, when you, oh, I, wrong one, wrong window, wrong window. Where's the other one? Oh yeah, it's here. Confused lady meme. She's the one that knows all the math, though. I mean, let's be honest. Um, uh, these are the environments you create. Um, let me zoom in here because it's kind of small. Um, notice they're all running because I turned on. But notice they're, they're all based upon this runtime environment. These runtime environments are managed here. Because generally, Azure Machine Learning is used to run machine learning code. And machine learning code really... You've heard a data scientist say, hey, it runs on my machine. And you're like, okay, well, ship your machine. And that's what this is for. Uh, and so when you create an environment, um, you basically are creating your environment. So the um, let me find the environment that I'm doing here. Here's my custom environments. Here is the PF, stands for prompt flow, uh, ACS Cosmos. Uh, so this is the one that I'm using right now. And the way that you build these things is literally you just like make a Docker file. I mean, it's not, is that crazy? This is a Docker file. Uh, now we're currently, now again, some of this stuff is in private preview. Uh, and so I'm showing stuff that's kind of almost not all the way done. We have a current issue with the way we deploy these things where you have to have another environment built on top of that. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, 
this is how you build um, a prompt flow environment using Docker, which is like, you're like, oh, yeah, we're not reinventing wheels here. There's wheels that are already built. This is the base uh, prompt flow runtime, the one that I'm using that's stable. And then on top of that, I am upgrading pip because I can't stand looking at you should upgrade pip uh, on the environments. And then notice I'm installing Azure Cosmos DB as well as Azure Search uh, so that I can do some searching. Um, so here's a here's a good question that I want to answer. Uh, is there a way to utilize uh, prompt flow without uh, cognitive search? Yeah, you don't you don't need to use anything like in theory, you could just use it. And, and I'll show you in a second. Um, as long as you have a way to retrieve information and then uh, pull it into a uh, uh, prompt flow. But yeah, so this is how you build these environments. And then once this is built, again, I had to build this tiny environment, primarily because um, it, it needs special sauce to deploy. And so I built this one on top of that other one. But again, this is going to be fixed. And so now when I go to prompt flow and I create a runtime from a compute instance, I can, you know, call it memorable name, of course. And then I'll select my compute instance and then I can use my customized environment. And you can see that uh, there it is, the one that I built. You see that? But these are all, this is how you build custom environments. So in theory, you can put anything you want. But the good news is that because you're doing this, you're creating stability for other people that are working with you so that they can also use this same runtime environment. But I already built it, so let me go to the flows here. And we are on the Contoso a chat a store. And now uh, we are going to use, uh, we'll use ACS Cosmos because that's the one I want to use right now. And you're gonna figure out that my, this is gonna break. Um, Tell me what jackets you have. Because I think I used a new version of ACS Cosmos. So, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Uh, uh, what about hiking boots? It's going to break, and it's going to break in the cognitive search area. Uh, because uh, I there, there is a new cognitive search um API that came out because the vector search is in beta. There you go. See, there you go. A uh, couple of things wrong. Uh, the latest prompt flow takes out the tools. They're now connections. Validate. Uh, okay. The other thing that needs to get fixed is I think it's now vectors instead. And then this needs to be passed as an uh, because you can pass in multiple vectors when you're searching. Uh, I'm going to get this to work and then I'll explain each one of these things, by the way. Um, and then this, this, this. Okay. So we'll save it. And then uh, we'll clear this out and we'll... Um, boop, boop, boop. Let's try it out now and see if it works. Here we go. And while that's happening, let's see some more questions. Uh, is there a way to utilize prompt flow without? Yes. Yes. Would it require an environment to have the vector search approach available to it via Python? Doc? So uh, I didn't answer the second half. So you can do a couple of things. The only reason you would put uh, pip install stuff into environments is primarily to oh, let me make my face uh, because you want to use certain code because again, these things are all built using Python currently. Uh, so for example, if you have your LangChain, LangChain is already actually in the default build because in the in default environment, because we, we knew people would use prompt flow. I'm sorry, LangChain. Uh, but you, you can also abstract away your data fetch operations into REST APIs and then just call those. And then, so yeah. So that's a good question. Uh, Ooh, with prompt flow, could you play rock, paper, scissors with it? Yes, uh, you actually could. Uh, you would have to, but it feels like you were, you're using like a, a, a shotgun to kill a fly. That's a really good question. What tool are you using to draw on the, oh, uh, that would be, um, thanks to Mark Racinovich, 
the man with a plan. This is called Zoom It. Zoom It. Zoom It. Now with fewer calories and better taste. Uh, let's go back to uh, uh, thanks. In the current iteration of Promflo, what is the best way to incorporate fabric artifacts? Loving the MongoDB V Core, by the way. Yeah, you can include anything uh, so long as you have a connection to it and you can access it via code. Uh, and you'll see that in a second because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull in Cognitive or er, er, Cosmos DB in a second to show you the goodness. Uh, can you set up testing variations of? Okay. Uh, let me bring this over because I'm old. Can you set up testing variations with flow and score it both on perf and pricing so you can easily choose even the best model prompts for the use case? Oh, man, that's amazing. Uh, for perf, yes. For pricing, that's a great idea, actually. The reality, oh, you know, the reality, however, is with pricing, it's per token. And so I guess the token count would tell you it's a great proxy, but that's a really good... Um, uh that's a really good um question uh mark did, did seth say got a gym i don't know what i'm doing marco you know it's just i uh can this be attached to a repo so the answer to that is almost uh give me another week or two and i might have stuff to show you uh a week or two and i and i'll I'll have stuff to show you. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's I'm excited. Oh, I'll show you that stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a really good. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, get the Sys Internal Suites, including Zoom it at sysinternals.com, which will redirect to Microsoft.com. All right, great questions. Uh, let's keep going uh, because this, we're working on the stuff here. So notice that when I do this now, this is all working. We have two jackets, a Summit Breeze jacket. And um, hold on, let's read it like it's a commercial. We have two jackets, Summit Breeze jacket and Rain Guard hiking jacket. The Summit Breeze jacket is lightweight, windproof, water resistant, and has adjustable cuffs and hoods. It's perfect for hiking. Wow, thank you. Um, thank you, PropFlow. Um, thank you, PropFlow, for that. Okay. So now let's get into what this is doing so you can see. So when the input comes in, the input comes from the questions. And because we describe this thing as a chat prompt flow, it automatically has this particular variable called chat history. And in it, it has the, the you know, whatever I just put in it, right? So, so if I continue chatting with it, that's how it remembers. Uh, these things do not have any state, uh, these models. They don't have any remembrance, even in between tokens, of what the heck you're talking about. Uh, basically, the token goes in, uh, the, the prompt goes in, converted to tokens, chug, 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 token comes out, bloop. I think that's that's the exact sound it makes in the data center. Bloop, just one token. And then it does it in a loop. So really, it's like bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, that's why it looks like it's typing. It isn't. Um, and so that's what's going on. So let's take a look at, at this particular run uh, here. The first thing that you need to look at is, as the question has before, you can actually see the trace of the entire thing. So the first thing that happens is I am doing an embedding of the question. So the input is, tell me about your jackets. And I'm using text embedding ADA2 using this Azure OpenAI call. And you can see that the... Um, Sorry, in this trace, doop, doop, you can see that the output is this gigantic vector. And it's not going to show it to me. Oh, there you go. Uh, this gigantic vector. So what this is, is this is effectively projecting, projecting my question. My question, uh, tell me about your hiking jackets. And it's projecting it into a different space. And that space is vector space. So it's converting this into like X1, you know, X2, blah, 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 all the way to X. I don't know how many is in there. I think it's like 200 or something, right? Um, 
So that's what this is doing. And then what happens is we take this vector and we search it against Azure Cognitive Search to retrieve the vectors that are closest to it. And these vectors represent a document. Now, the reason why you use vector search in this stuff, uh, and this is important, is because you only have a finite amount of space inside of the prompt. 4,000 tokens for GPT-35 Turbo. And so the cool thing about vector search is you can do something called chunking, which takes all of your information, chunks it into little bits, and then assigns a vector to that because you take that little bit and then you push it through this uh, embedding API too so that you get a bunch of vectors. And it looks like the embedding is 1,536 is the space of the embedding. Okay. And so once you cert, you uh, you and you uh, index all your stuff, the way you're indexing, index is just like a table. It's basically a table of vector, your your fact chunk, fact chunk, vector, fact chunk, vent, vent, vector. And that way, when I ask a question, this vector then goes to Azure Cognitive Search and pulls it out. So uh, let me unchatify this. So that's what this does. This is embedding the vector. Uh, then embedding the question into vector space. And then this thing here is going into Azure Cognitive Search and pulling it out. Now, I think there's a custom tool that does this. Um, oh, yeah, it looks like we have embeddings already. Doop. See, I'm doing, I'm, I'm using the old stuff. And then you can see we also have a vector DB lookup. But I wanted to go like fully artisanal, you know, like full... I want this to be free range, artisanal, handcrafted prompts. Uh, but in theory, you can actually uh, create your own, you can create your own tool. So, uh, oh, wow. Hi everyone, this is, I believe an AI has showed up. Hello, robot overlords. I knew you would arrive sooner or later. I don't know who that is, but I thought that was funny, so I said it. Uh, okay, so you can see that we also have those kind of just built in, so you can totally just use uh, these tools that are in there. And so you you would basically just drag this on. Uh, but I, I wanted to show you like artisanal and also I wanted to show you this because um, uh, didn't exist when I built this the first time. <laughs> Question from Marco, my main man. Uh, do you need to use vector search to make this work or will it work with semantic search? It turns out it'll work with just anything. The reality is, is that when you get to the prompt, uh, uh, so by the way, let me, well, I'll answer that question in a second. Great question. Um, so you can see all this is doing is this is uh, pulling from the documents index in Azure Cognitive Search. It's it's embedding the question as well as the vectors for searching. We're searching on the content field for the text, but we're searching on the embedding field for the vector. Uh, so that's what it's doing. Um, now the model itself is not learning from this the model is static and then finally what we do is we take this um we take this uh why is it word wrap just by default on to write that down sure write that down um notice that it's i'm saying you are the contoso track assistant you are helpful and friendly and respond to only to questions about products and services this is what you know and what i'm doing is i'm iterating through every one of these things and also putting in the chat history is what I'm doing. And so when you see this thing running, you can see that when I go to the retrieve documentation, right, the input is the vector, the output is the content, right? Which is two documents about hiking jackets. So to answer the question about searching, the answer really is no, you don't need to use a vector search at all. You can do whatever you want, but effectively what you're doing is you're injecting data into the prompt so that the likely answer that comes back is actually grounded in, in the truth, uh, which is the documents you retrieve. Uh, so that's a great question, Marco. And then another question uh, here, uh, let's see the question. Um, so what would you need to do to test this thing and score it perfect against two different models? 
it'd be nice if you can feed it in choice to variable when you run the test. Yes, uh, that's a great question. So the question is, how do we test the thing? I'll get to that. I'll get to that. That's a great question. Uh, another question, which is, I think, a good one. Let me put my head here again. Uh, which is better, using raw document search with vector or extract information to DB Cosmos and search from DB? It really is up to you and um, your infrastructure and where you store your facts. Because uh, if you recall, and, and if you watched the first video, I basically motivated what the heck this is doing. The only thing you can put in these models is a prompt. And if you want to maximize the likelihood of the truth being told at the end, uh, basically, you have to put as much information you can as a prompt. And so it really depends on your infrastructure. Like, where do you store your stuff? Like, it might be in SharePoint. Doesn't mean you can't use it, uh, but you are constrained by, uh, you are constrained by um, uh, the size of the prompt. Another question, are you using Langchain uh, with Azure AI Studio here? Currently, I'm not, but, but you can't. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. In fact, let me show you another prompt flow uh, because I, I want I want to make sure folks recognize that like this is just basically code, and you can put whatever you want in here. So some folks might like might like um, here. Let me open another one. So I'm not here, here's another prompt flow. So we'll go here. Here is uh, HLP manufacturing. Um, no, 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 not this one, not this one. Uh, which one is the one that I did? Is it this one? No. So I have one. I have one that uses Langchain. Is it this one? Is it you? Is it me? I don't know where it is. I'm not going to find it. I wish I would have labeled it. What's wrong with me? Yes, here, here's one Here's one using Langchain. Notice that the graph looks a little bit different because with Langchain, you basically inject the prompt in. And so you can see that we have several prompts going into this product rag. And this product rag, when you look at it, is using all Langchain stuff. You see that? Uh, and so really, we don't care what you use uh, at all. And you can see here it's using an LLM chain. And then it's using the chain.run, blah. The cool thing about this is when you run it, you can actually take a look at the trace, to see where things are taking a long time. You can look at the inputs and the outputs. So this is the cool bit of this of this thing, which is really cool. And by the way, this little, little fun fact, the way you can actually even do sub traces is you just need to add this little tool thing. That's how we, yeah, great question. Oakley dokley, what were we doing? Uh, okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. Uh, okay, so there's the prompt. And then finally, this prompt is injected into the LLM. And so what you're seeing here is I'm saying, please be brief. And it turns out that the last, the last thing that you show the LLM is for some reason, it really loves that. And so you can see... Uh, Please be extra brief, extra brief. Yeah, what, what is this? This is really long. So now when I do this again, uh, in theory, uh, the model takes about six seconds, uh, but when you run it inside a prompt flow in debug mode, it takes a little bit longer, you know, to assemble all the stuffs. Uh, uh, did, 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 did. Okay, cool. Notice that it's extra brief, and you know our jackets are quality, top quality. Look at that! Wow, you are oh, you are like look at you being extra. Look at that! Jackets are top quality and perfect for outdoor activities like camping and hiking. They are waterproof with with fi with fire <laughs> fire wind. <laughs> Oof, I don't know about that. And made with breathable fabric. Right? We have a variety of styles and shoes. Oh. Uh. Uh, which jackets? Uh, so yeah, and so as you go through this, you can actually see again the whole input output. So there is the uh, there is the uh, retrieve documentation. Uh, this uh, the output of this retrieve documentation is the jackets stuff. But you'll find there's a flaw in my design, and we'll 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 try to fix it as we go. Like this is totally demo wear. 
uh, uh, let's go to the trace again. And then once we build the prompt, this is the prompt that's, that's being built. So this is the input to the prompt thing. This is the output. You are the Contoso Truck AI Assistant. So you can see all the text, the wall of text that we're sending it. Uh, notice that it's going through all of this stuff. It's putting in the answer, etc. And then, uh, yeah, that's how you get this output. So that's how this works. All right, let's take a look at the questions here. Uh, uh, so let's see here, this question. That means before embedding, we can incorporate a translator API to translate the prompt to English after texting the input language. And then we can, yeah, you can do whatever you want. This is this is the, the this is the thing with prompt flow. The, now again, I'm gonna, unpopular opinion time. Unpopular opinion time. I'm not a fan of some of the LLM frameworks because they obfuscate the actual task, which is creating a prompt. That's all you're doing. There's no, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion. Uh, all you're creating is text so that it returns the best response. I don't like some of these frameworks that hide that very important task. I don't know what you think. I, you know, uh, it's just my opinion. I and, it, and I've had this opinion for like two months since I've seen them and it's not popular even amongst folks that I work with. And that's okay. That's okay. We all don't have the same opinion. Um, Oh, here's a here's another question. Can you show examples of storing answers of LLM and then reusing, recalling them back into the LLM agent stuff? Yes, yes. It turns out that these LLMs by default do not uh, store anything at all. And so what happens is that in the um, the chat history is stored uh, by the caller. So for example, notice that in this case, this is the chat history. This is being stored by PropFlow uh, as an exercise in debugging. When you export this as an API, it is the responsible of it is the responsibility of the calling application to store the chat history. In that case, you know some of these frameworks are are good for that. They call them, they're, they're called memory, you know, etc. Uh, so that's a good, good example. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, even easier if there's a demo to trans show the translation. Yeah. So in, in effect, what you would do is you would, you would have, I would build a, I would build an AI model. Oh, you can't see my face. Let me move this out of the way. Uh, here I would build a, I would have a, a little language detector language detector and then i would have another no once it has the answer to do a translation and then i would go into here yes uh so can more than one person work on the flow currently uh that's ivana welcome bienvenida <clears throat> can more than one person work on the flow holy cow i'm running out of time uh yes but not it's not nice right now it's going to be super nice give me a couple of weeks uh what's the best way to integrate prompt flow for sql server sap db to query data oh see love it these are all great questions uh you would basically at minimum like this like the thing like if you couldn't do anything else you would create your own environment that calls the sap uh thing so like you might have a pip install and then you would you would you would write code to pull stuff out. So yeah, I'll show you in a second how to do that with um, um, Cosmos DB and it's the same thing. Yeah, we'll delete that stuff. Uh, is there a GitHub repo that contains the export of the prompt flow and examples that you're showing? Not yet, but again, they told me we don't have a show plan for next week. So I might be doing like a part three, sorry, part three. Part three. Part three. 
of it. So maybe we can we can do that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's coming soon. Oh, look at that! Absolutely. Uh, is there chat history sent every time? Yes, yes. And the reason why is because the chat history takes up uh, takes up valuable token. That was my bad. Takes up valuable tokens. So sometimes you need to think about like how much of the chat history to put in there to give the model content. And so that's something that you have in the AI a, 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 uh, in the um, in the uh, calling APIs. Let me just show you. Let me just show you one that I've already done. Um, here's an endpoint. Uh, HLP manufacturing. Let's see. Okay. Cool. 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 So test. So this is one that's already in deployment. Um, in this case, we have a really cool chat API already built in. So that's not helpful. Uh, let me do a Contoso Copilot. This one does not have the helpful API. Um, and so you would basically pass in an array that has the history to this. Oh, geez. I'm like showing you stuff and not even like doing the screen. One second, one second. Here we go. So the way I got to this is I went to endpoints and then in endpoints, I went to the Contoso Copilot here. And then the test, you can see that I can test it. And so you're you're basically doing a post. You're doing a post on this um, with this with this thing. So when I test it, you'll see it needs to warm up. Do a second here. I'm gonna drink here. Um unless I broke it. So essentially what's happening is you pass in the history as an array to the actual um, API call. There it is. Thank you, sir. Okay. So that's a good question. Okay. So now the question that's important is this. And, and this, is also, this is also important because we have a problem that we need to solve, but let's make this a next week's problem. Notice that when I chat, uh, cool, I can say, uh, uh, which is the best one? So when I ask you this, you're gonna see that it's just gonna be like, give me garbage in the response. Um, here, let me move myself out of the box so you can see. Um, this is going to respond with garbage. And the reason why, oh, wow, I guess not. Um, in this case, it isn't. But let me let me show you something. Like the, the model is smart. In this particular run, um, let's see here. Um, this is the thing that gets embedded into the uh, into uh, vector space. And so the search that it returns is like random stuff. So this is something uh, this is something that we need to uh, think about. Uh, there is a there is a comment here. by the way, it's very slow. Uh, three seconds is how long these models take to respond. That's not a us thing. that's just here yeah this three seconds is how long these models take to run on gpus uh the uh gpt3 uh four takes probably 12 to 13 seconds to respond that's just the nature of these models uh just seem uh i don't think you'll find them to be any faster but i'll tell you certainly a heck of a lot faster than humans How about them apples, uh, but you're right. You you will definitely see. Uh, you will see. This is how long it takes, and about three seconds is what you can expect. Uh, but that's a great question, great observation. But yes, it's true. These models take a, take about three seconds. Um, uh, you're right. Uh, but I think uh, because it's streaming, I I don't know if this one's streaming actually. But I think we just turned on streaming. It makes it look like it's more immediate because time to first token is actually not three seconds. Uh, and so that's what streaming makes it look like faster, a little bit faster. 
but I don't know if I have streaming enabled here, so we'll have to look at that. Great question, great observation. Again, we're all it's all real here. We're not. I'm not going to fake stuff, etc. So let me go back to this so you can see more stuff. Um, but notice again, the important thing is that I basically injected into the prompt a bunch of bogus documents. And this is an important thing because now we need to figure out how to fix that. And so we will, maybe we'll, y'all can think about that and we can figure out for next time. Okay. So now the question, <clears throat> now the question is, okay. Um, how good is this? Uh, and how do we test it? So that's what bulk tests are for. Uh, all right, I'll save it. Bulk. Jeez, oh, this might be a bug. We need to check it out. Did I save it? Save, 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 save. Fine, I'll run it anyway. So let's see. Um, let's take a look at this data because what we need to do is we need to have um, a data set for testing this stuff. And what what does a data set mean? So let's see, Contoso, Trek, Intent, Explore. So this is how you go for, for data sets. Uh, okay, so here's what these data sets look like. But I've, I've, got, to, I've got to make a better one. Um, I, I thought I already had. So let's go back here. Small Contoso Outdoors. Was this me? Is it me? Yeah. So here's an example of, you know, a question and some history. Oh, this turn, this stop. So we'll, we'll hit play. Uh, so what I'll do then is how about we make a brand new one for testing and we'll open it up in Visual Studio Code, file, uh, open folder. Uh, let me make a new folder. Uh, PF test. Okay, so now we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it our test.json uh, uh, test test contoso, contoso contoso chat. Again, we're working on making this better. Jason, no. And this is what we have. Uh, let me double check to make sure. Looks like we only have a question. Eventually, we're going to add a customer ID. So let me put that in there now. And then I'll just put uh, like what? Uh, two. So now that we have this, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a bunch of questions. The other thing that's important is we need to match uh, the inputs. So we have, um, hold on, let me move this over here. Okay. So we have a customer ID, a question, and then a chat history. Again, it's early. We're gonna make this better. But I wanna show you what you what, how you do it now. Let me move this over here. Cool. Uh, uh, so the first question is, tell me about your hiking jackets. Um, how about, uh, do you have any climbing, cl cl climb, climbing gear? What else should we do? What what else should we ask? We'll, we'll do uh, 10. No, let's do five because uh, me making this stuff up in front of you is probably going to be boring. Uh, we're going to do here. Um, let's do one, four. Uh, we already did four, three, six, two. Do you have any climbing gear? Uh, what is another thing that I know they have? Uh, can you tell me about your selection of tent? That's, um, what else? Uh, do you have any hiking 
boots and then finally um uh what uh gear do do you recommend for hiking let's do that oh hiking i spelled it wrong but that's okay so now what i've done is i built this test a set of questions that i want to ask the model to test it so let's go to the bulk test here yes run anyways we need to upload some new data and we're going to call it the uh what is this uh contoso tos contoso chat store test we're going to browse 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 uh and then we're going to go to projects and then we call it pf test and then this test contoso so we'll add this very nice uh and now what we're going to do is we're going to hit next and we're just going to bulk test without evaluation for now just because i want to i want to show you some stuff next so they hit next uh submit and then the prompt flow acs cosmos okay so now what this is going to do is it's going to run all of these questions against this particular prompt flow. So when we go to view bulk runs, we should start to see this bulk test. And when we go to outputs, hopefully you'll see some of the answers. Do you see that? And so now what I've done is I've taken this thing that I think works. Um, wow, this is not a good answer. Catalog, mountain, item, question mark. Is that the answer? That's not very good. Uh, we have a variety of tents available. Okay, cool. Yes, we have hiking boots. <laughs> That's helpful. Uh, what do you recommend for hiking? Hiking shoes, backpack, weather appropriate. Okay, so these answers are not very good, uh, which is something we want to improve. Okay, so now the question is this. Let's take a look at individual one of these runs to see like, what is it that happened? Uh, so you can see the actual inputs and outputs. So here is the question. Do you have any climbing gear? Uh, here is the question embedding. Let's take a look at what the outputs are for that. Notice that in retrieve, these are the documentation. This is the question, the documentation that was returned for it. And let's see, what was the question about again? Do you have any climbing gear? Here, oh man, I was getting confused. Yeah, it looks like it's training the Alpine tent as a climbing gear. And then looks like it's returning the Summit climbing backpack. Did I say camping? This is not very good. Uh, do you have any climbing gear? Not very good. Maybe we just don't have any and it's that's what it's suggesting. So there's a couple things wrong with what I'm doing right now. And and I, obviously I built this for demo purposes, but if we want to make this better, the first thing is you notice that I'm not doing chunking at all. No chunking. Um and so that's a problem. If I did chunking, I'd be able to I'd be able to um I'd be able to put exactly the bits of information that I wanted to return. So I'm not doing chunking. Number 1, and that's causing a problem. Okay, so let's go back over here and then examine other other ones uh, and what's going on. Do we have any hiking boots? Yes, we have hiking boots. Uh, what do you recommend for hiking? And I was hoping for products. And so notice that now that I'm looking at this, this is not this is not as good as I would have liked. So let me go back to this Contoso chat store. And let's uh, let's change the store assistant. Store assistant, you are helpful and only respond to questions about products and services uh, found in the documentation below. Uh, documentation. 
this documentation should be you should be be used in the response response text uh, but rely primarily on the document okay so let's see what this does here so we'll save this uh, and then we'll run the bulk test again here yes I'll run it anyways uh, cool next uh, no evaluation for now because we're doing the eyeball test right now Oh, by the way, I, I, I'm ignore. I'm not ignoring your question. So let's go back to some of your questions here. Uh, while it runs, I think the document has to be parsed properly. Not really. Uh, the LLM doesn't really. I mean, you can parse it, but it's just all sent as a big chunk to the LLM. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, chunking. Yep. No, totally right. Totally right. Yeah, I don't. I'm not chunking. You're right. Um, uh, I missed the first part. Me too. How many characters tokens are recommended for optimal chunking size for accuracy? That's really like a you gotta eyeball test it and then really evaluate test it. Oh shoot. I gotta I gotta play the walk-off music already. Gosh, this went by really fast. Um by the way, I played the walk-off music about a couple minutes before, just so I know I need to hurry up. Uh, how many characters tokens are recommended for optimal? I don't know. Uh, that's something you gotta you gotta test and, and figure out. But I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> what do you recommend for hiking? Stamina, love for the outdoors, and some Kendall mint cake. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Um, in this scenario, when the response was correct for most questions except one, we suggest including few shot examples to improve the results on climbing gear. Yes, but you want to do it so that you do not. Um, so you notice how I created a set of questions. Uh, imagine that set as your eyeball test, first eyeball test of like, I wanted to be able to answer these questions. Uh, and so the problem is, is if I give it a few shot for climbing gear only, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yes. Um, yeah, you, you can give it totally example. And that's what I was starting to do. I was starting to refine my my prompt a little bit. I shouldn't have done it that way, though. Uh, I should have done it a different way. And I'll show you that next week. Uh, great question. Uh, or updating gear. Yeah, yeah, you can totally update the gear, climbing gear. Uh, question. It seems that the standard structure for LLM is markdown. Uh, have you explored HTML-like tags? Does that perform better? I don't know. And this is this is the great thing is prompt flow as you're seeing now i'm starting to get into evaluation and testing uh to make sure that it's working and you can see that i'm like i got a lot of like i started bulk testing instead of eyeball testing uh with just the chat and this is where we start to get like rubber hits the road of like making the prompt actually better uh could prompt flow be used uh to test lm with real real-time data yeah that's exactly what i was doing uh, that when I ran the bulk test, it actually calls uh, Azure Cognitive Search and whatever else you put in there as well. All right. Uh, so for next time, uh, uh, get your questions in too as I talk about next time. Next week, uh, we'll continue evaluations. I'll show you prompt variants. Uh, by the unless they they tell me not to, but they didn't tell me what show we we're doing. So I'm like, fine. I'll just do another prompt flow. Numero tres, parte tres. Uh, next time I'll talk about prompt variants because I, I kind of started editing a prompt. I, I think you saw that, um, but I should have introduced, I should. I was going to start to introduce a concept of something called prompt variants. So you can get a sense as you're testing stuff out, um, which prompts are better and which prompts are worse, which ones you can discard, look at, some, do some history, etc. Uh, so we'll start to do that. And then we'll start to get it into metrics uh, because there were some excellent questions about like, what do we do about metrics? Um, 
Um, so yeah, we'll talk about metrics. Uh, question here uh, from uh, Jasim. Great question today, by the way. Can you please explain and highlight what Azure Studio brings differently to using VS Code or PyCharm? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the reality is that though, uh, why not both? And I'll, I'll talk about that whenever I can, but it's just not quite yet. Uh, and comparing model perfs, please. Yes, uh, performance is great. It, it actually will show up in the uh, for for both. So we'll, it, it, I think it shows it. Let me let me see here. Um, let me go to. The, it's not what I want. Let me go to here. I know you can't see it, so apologies. But I think it shows up in the. It's not showing perf, uh, which stinks. Uh, oh, hold on there. Hold on. Let me, let me share my screen here real quick. Yeah, it's not showing it. That's a great, uh, we might need to show perf in here. I don't know why we don't show it. Um, yeah, great, 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 uh, great call out. So we'll add that hopefully. Okay. So the question is when do you use semantic kernel versus prompt flow? Um, it doesn't matter. Right, semantic kernel. There's a Python version of it. Think of semantic kernel the same as you would think of Langchain. It's a it's a, a prompt orchestrator. Uh, I'm just the thing that that you brings value from prompt flow is the testing and 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 evaluation and history of tests, uh, and then deployment and monitoring afterwards. And so that's what prompt flow, the the full prompt flow brings to you. Uh, semantic kernel is awesome. Uh, uh, Langchain is awesome. If that's something you like using, great. I'm not a fan of, of orchestrators that hide the actual task. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, last question. How far over the hour are you going? Not a minute more. Janice Q number seven. Thanks so much for being with us. This has been another episode of the AI show. As always, this show is all about you. So if you have any questions, comments, or, uh, or things that you want to do, please let us know. We'll see you next time, my friend. I'll do a little last opener. Thanks so much. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.